ran over a cat because I thought it was a pothole. <laughs> Good morning. Actually, good afternoon. It's 1.30. I just got back from church and I stopped at Zook's to get a sandwich because I'm hungry and I don't have any food because I need to go grocery shopping because I ate all my food. Except for the two bags of, um, what was it? Carrots, something else in there. I'm gonna go back to Trader Joe's and get some of that, more of those mashed potatoes and teriyaki, or not teriyaki, um, chicken fajita and carrots because that sounds super good. But I stopped at Zook's and I got some potato salad. I have not had their potato salad yet. Mm, I can't tell if it's good just because I'm super hungry or it's all right. And then I got this little sandwich. I can't tell you all what's on it. I know I can see that there's tomatoes, cucumber, Parmesan cheese, lettuce, and turkey and bread. There's probably other stuff on here. Oh, onions, I see some onions. But Zook's is super good for sandwiches. This is actually the first sandwich place that I stopped at when I first moved here. Also, if you could tell, my nails did not last long. They were getting really annoying. I think the next time I actually wanna have gel nails, I'll actually go and get them done because that is not gonna cut up. Convenient as it is to do it by yourself, it's just kind of a waste of time and a waste of product because it just doesn't stay on. At least with the method that I've been doing, that's not staying on. So I don't know if you guys have any recommendations, let me know, but I think also to save me time and the burden of annoyance, I think I'll get them done next time. But for now, I think I'm just gonna keep using the instant dry nail polish. It's super easy, it dries super fast, and yeah, it chips like a day later, but at least it doesn't lift and get caught in my hair. All right, that sandwich was good. I have, I forgot to show you guys some of the packages that I got from Amazon, from Amazon Prime. I already opened them, of course, so I'm just gonna show you those, but I do have um, some other packages I wanted to open. One is a shirt. I can't tell you the last time I bought a shirt. Also, I don't know if I'm gonna like it, so I might be returning it. Cute little tank top to go with my cute little flowy pants that I got. I don't think it's gonna fit. Oh, maybe it will. Oh, maybe it will. Ooh, I don't know. Should I go try it on? I'm kinda scared. It's cute, it was only $8. Let me go try it on. Okay, I don't know if I like it. Um, it's a size large, but like this part, half of my boob because my, my boobs start down here. So I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll ask Kaylee if she wants it, but it's super cute. Man, I cannot believe a large is not big enough. That's crazy. Well, whatever, let's open up this other thing. I was super excited about this, but for $8, I don't really want to return it. I'll just see if Kaylee wants it. I'm nervous about this too. Gemma set, but I don't know if it's gonna fit either. This is the only reason why I don't like buying things online because you just never know if they're gonna fit. As much as I hate trying things on in the fitting rooms, I hate buying things and then them not fitting. Okay, so here are the bottoms. They have like little flowers on them. And this is the top. Oh gosh, I don't think the top is gonna fit me either. Oh my gosh, what are we doing? This is the top. I'm gonna go try this on. I'll be back. Okay, here's, <laughs> here's the pajama set. Honestly, it doesn't really fit me either. It's a little small. This is super tight. The shorts, I wish, were a little bit stretchier. But I mean, it's cute. I just wish it fitted me a little bit better. Yeah, the top is really small and there's no, like, adjust adjustable. There's no adjustment strap, so I can't make it more loose. Just see if Kaylee wants it. Do I keep it? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. And it's a large too. Gosh, I'm like a, this is why I wear a 4XL and everything. Super cute though. Well, hold on, let me go change. I actually don't know why I just changed back into clothes because I was gonna try on one of these tops for you. I forgot to show you this in my last video, but I ended up getting new bikinis. So we have one top that looks like this. Looks like this and then tie it in the back. And it came with these really cute bottoms that have the little rufflies. Okay, bro, come on. The little ruffles right here. So that's cute. I'm not a huge fan of the bottoms that cover your entire butt. Just, they're just not comfortable for me. I find these ones the most comfortable and maybe it's just because of my body shape. And then I also got this same one in this top shape. I like this top shape a little bit more, but I didn't have one like this. So I thought that would be a fun little change. And as you guys know, I'm afraid of color. So as you can see, this one's like black with some color in it, but I tried exploring out of my horizon and trying something a little different. I feel like 
I'm gonna be a neon highlighter in the pool. We ended up getting two colored bathing suits. And one is this. It's cute little florals on it. I don't really know what kind of design that is, but oh, maybe they're like little sunflowers. This one is super cute. I hate the padding that they all come in. So the padding I took out in all of these because they're just, it's super uncomfortable, at least for me. These bottoms, these bottoms are a little bit wider, which I also find super comfortable. I don't mind these. But yeah, this is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it's okay. This one is also really <laughs> out of my comfort zone, but I am just, just trying new things here. A pink one, and I think a pink, I'm, I'm actually really starting to like pink. I used to actually hate the color pink because it was too girly, but maybe it's because I'm seeing so much pink lately because of that stupid Barbie movie that came out. What did you just say? I got a pink one with pink bottoms and these bottoms are the same ones as these ones same shape and yeah they're all from amazon they're pretty cheap so if i'm buying like a set a bikini set it's really hard for me to find a set where the bottoms fit me just right and the top to fit me just right usually i have to buy one of each but lately i've been scoring and they both have been fitting me perfectly all of these will be linked in my description even like the pj set and the other shirt that i tried on for you i'm not gonna try these on for you sorry and i feel like there was something else i wanted to show you oh yeah I remember my pants, my flowy beachy pants that I showed you in the last video or the video before. I washed them in hot water because I thought drying them is what makes them shrink. But hot water will make them shrink too because my trunk. They still fit, but they're just not as flowy and they're not as long. So I'm really bummed about that. Just for future reference, if you go buy those beachy pants, don't wash them in hot water. Wash them in cold water and air dry them. I'm gonna have to get another pair of those because they're so comfortable. Anywho, that's my little haul. Go get you some bathing suits. Okay, well, I'm not doing anything for the rest of the day. Figured I would just share the story now because it's, I just, I, it was honestly one of the most traumatic things <laughs> that has ever happened to me. I cope by laughing. So I'm not laughing at the fact that this happened. It's more of like a coping mechanism now. You've already seen the title of this video. So I know you know where I'm going with this. Now I look back at it because the concept is kind of funny. Can I tell you, I bawled my eyes out for weeks. I mean, I bawled my eyes out for weeks. So listen to the story of how I ran over a cat because I thought it was a pothole. <laughs> just gotten day, so this was in 2020. Hold on, let me open up my shake. So I had just gotten days at this point and we were going to one of the parks that everyone would go to. I would park in a very like open area where everyone else would park. It's a fairground. So you can park in the gravel area and right in front of you is like a big open field. Dace and I would go there. We would go there every evening, but we started going in the morning. And Dace was probably around like, I don't know, six, seven months old. We started going there and then I started seeing this other lady with her other dogs. And I don't know if she like just started going there or if she was already going there because Dace and I had just started going in the morning. So I don't know if that was like a routine of hers that she started doing or if that's a something that she had been continuously doing. It came to the point to where, you know, we would see each other every single morning and over the past couple of weeks, she ended up coming up to me and then our dogs ended up meeting. If I can remember correctly, her dog wasn't a fan of other dogs. So what she ended up doing when she was done walking and running her dog, she would put her dog in the car and then she would come over and talk to me. And we would just talk about like life, how Dace is doing and how old Dace is and like where I got him and what we're doing for the rest of the day. Like she was just a very sweet lady. And I just remember looking forward to seeing her in the mornings each morning that we would go. A couple weeks go by and I ended up like not seeing her. At this point, a couple weeks or even a month had went by and I was on the other side of town. I was dog sitting my mom's friends dogs. It's in this uh manufactured park thing. I was leaving. I don't remember. I don't exactly remember what I was leaving for or what I was doing, but I was in the manufactured Place. I was leaving. I was leaving her house. I had Dace with me. Dace was in the back seat. Dace is just being super obnoxious. He's just like running back and forth, jumping back and forth in the back, and I'm trying to like calm him down. Just because he gets super antsy when we're in the car because he loves road trips. He always thinks we're going to the park anytime he gets into the car. He's just like super excited. I wanted to know like where we're going. Going back and forth. Going back and forth. I'm like trying to roll down the window for him so he can not jump out the window because he won't do that, but get out the window to get fresh air and whatnot. I see this like black hole in front of me and. I turned for two seconds to like back Dace up because he had jumped on to the middle console. Remind you, he's a puppy at this point. He had jumped into like the middle console and he, and so I like pushed him back with my arm and I seen this pothole thing coming up. So I tried swerving away from it, but I ended up swerving into it. And then it, it was a bump. <laughs> it was a bump. So I'm like, 
Oh my gosh. And I look in my rear view mirror and I see this black thing bolt across the road and into the garage and under this person's car. So I'm like, oh no. Like my heart was on the floor. Absolutely on the floor. Stopped the car and I'm thinking, it looked like a pothole. I tried swerving because I thought it was a pothole. I couldn't exactly see what it was because I was too busy trying to get dates under control. That could have not been a cat, but it was a bump. But potholes are holes, not bumps. <laughs> so I'm thinking, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? What do I do, what do I do, what do I do? My car's parked. I go over to this house where I, where I thought I saw the cat run into. A manufactured house, so it's not like a garage, but it's like an undercover shed where you like park your car underneath. So that's what I went to. And I seen that this cat was underneath the car. Like it's moving okay, but it's meowing. And I'm like trying to get it to come here. Like, oh my gosh, like, please don't tell me I just ran over you. Please tell me you just witnessed me running over something. My heart's racing, I'm sweating, I'm wanting to cry. I don't know what to do, like I'm in shock. Usually when I go into shock, I'm at a very calm state of mind because I'm always trying to like think clear. I remember telling myself, okay, just go knock on this person's door and see if it's their cat or if they know somebody that owns this black cat. I go knock on the door. <laughs> I go knock on the door. Mind you, I'm on the opposite side of town in a manufactured place. I don't know anybody here except for my mom's friends. This lady answers the door and guess who it is? <laughs> It's the lady that I was seeing every single morning when I was taking days to the park. Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> At that point, I just wanted to off myself. I'm like... I'm literally about to pass out. She opened the door and she was like, Hi, how are you, Paul? I'm like... Hold up! She's just thinking like I'm coming to say hi or whatever, but she's also in shock at the fact that I'm here at her house and I didn't know where she lived. I didn't even know what part of town she was on, like whatever. Next, I didn't see her for a couple weeks and the next thing she knows I'm at her door. Like, hi, I'm fine. Like, um, do you own a black cat? And she goes, yeah, I do. Why? And she's like looking around and I'm like, uh, I started crying. I started crying. I was like, I think I just ran over it. And she goes, what? what? How? And I was like, well, she was just down here and I was trying to get my dog under control in the back. Like days, you, you met him. He's a little cycle right now. I was coming up on something and I thought it was a pole, so I tried missing it, but it ended up being your cat and it was a bump. And like, I'm thinking too, like this entire time, the cat was laying right in the middle of the road. You're laying right in the middle of the road and you see a car coming in and you're not going to move. You're not going to move. Not tonight. And if you were sleeping, for one, why are you sleeping in the middle of the road where you know traffic is coming? And two, how did you not hear me coming? So anyways, I'm like offering to like go to the vet with her and like pay for any and all expenses that this visit is going to cost. Making it very clear like I'm going to pay for all of the expenses. And she goes like, no, no, no worries. Like we're just going to take her to the hospital really quick. I'm sure everything is fine. And I'll keep you updated. We'll go from there. Thank you so much for stopping and letting us know. Like I know accidents happen. It's very unfortunate, but I know it's not your fault and you didn't know. It was an accident. But, and she was just so sweet and I'm like making me cry even more. It's just like a really, really sad accident. So she's like going to get the cat carrier. By this point, the cat's just meowing up the storm, storm of her trying to get um, the cat into the, into the cat carrier, the pet carrier, because yeah, though the cat looked fine, it definitely wasn't. It was definitely injured and she got it into the car. She took it to the vet. We exchanged numbers and she ended up texting me late, later that night or the next morning or so telling me that they ended up having to put her down because all of her ribs were broken and she had a punctured kidney or liver or something. And I'm like, what? I'm never gonna see you at the park again. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was like, I know this doesn't make up for the fact that I just killed your cat, but please let me pay for the expenses that you were not expecting. Come out of your wallet today. And she goes, no, 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 like, sweetie, it's fine. It's an accident, things happen. Some things are just out of our control. It was just so sweet. It breaks my heart. It was just a cute baby kitten. Like, not a baby baby kitten, but it was probably like, and seven, eight month old, like the same age as Dace. And it was the cutest little thing. What made me remember this story was cat ran in front of me the other day on the road and I'm in my big Jeep now. And I'm like, that really would have killed you instantly. You would have had no time to run anywhere and then get to the vet. You would have been 
squished. But yeah, that was the that was the time that I ran over a cat from weeks on end after that. I remember asking everyone at my work if they had ever ran over an animal and how they dealt with it and how they coped because I was not okay after that. I tell you what, five, six months later, I ended up having a wedding out in the boondocks. It was held on this farm, but in order to get to this property, you had to take a whole gravel road out to it. It was probably like three, four miles long. I ended up staying there until like midnight or one in the morning. No, it was not that late. It was about midnight. I was driving back the gravel road and I'm just really going like slow because because at this point in time, I didn't know how to work my... I knew how to turn my headlights on. Well, I thought I did, but they weren't my actual headlights. They were just like my street lights. Anyways, that's a long story. That's a really stupid long story. I'm like dri driving slow. I'm driving careful. And next thing I know, this deer is side swiping me. Acting like I'm... I'm... I'm out to get him. Hit me with his hip at the front of my, my car. The deer goes away. And the next thing you know, a bunny is following <laughs> along behind him. And I'm like, you guys. Watch what I can do. Are we all just like, what crime are you trying to commit today? <laughs> like, are you out to get me or are you out to get yourself? I am so over animals <laughs> in my car. Anywho, <laughs> those are the few stories of me, unfortunately, hitting animals.